Hello, I'm Alan Holtham, and for this third Build It With Bosch project, welcome to my living room. Home entertainment seems to be getting more and more involved these days, and the TV ends up being surrounded by massive boxes which all need housing together somehow. You've probably got one for satellite TV, one for a DVD recorder, maybe even a video player and surround sound, and then of course there's the games console and all the bits and pieces associated with that. This unit is designed to house it all together. The shelves for all the boxes, DVDs and games. If you've got small children about, the glass doors will keep sticky fingers away from your finely tuned settings. And the front plinth is raised enough for a balance board to slide underneath. The big drawer will swallow up all the untidy games accessories and chargers and hide them all away neatly. It's very easy to make. Don't worry, this isn't fine and complicated cabinet making. It's held together with dowels and biscuits and I've just used a few power tools. So don't be afraid to have a go and make it for yourself. Let's get back in the workshop and I'll show you how, with a little help from Bosch. So, this is the material I'm going to be using. Some one inch maple, sometimes called rock maple. It's very light in colour but it is very very hard. I'm also going to be using some maple veneered ply, this is 4mm I use this for the back of the unit and also for the drawer bottom. Now you could just use thicker veneered ply or even veneered MDF and then lip the exposed edges to cover them up. It would probably be a lot quicker but for me you just cannot beat the feel and appearance of solid timber but there are a few downsides to using real wood. For a start, you won't be able to buy it in great big sheets. You're going to have to join narrow pieces together to make up the width. And then secondly, you'll probably have to buy it as rough sawn. You can see here, it's a long way off being smooth and flat with parallel edges. If you've got your own planer thickness, this is obviously no problem. But if you haven't, don't worry. Most timber merchants offer a machining service and will do the bulk of the preparation for you. And this is one of the secrets of working solid timber. You must ensure the matching components are all exactly the same thickness. They could achieve this with hand tools, but it's a lot of work and you're gonna to have to be pretty skillful. A few basic machines and power tools makes the job so much quicker and easier. So, here are all the pieces, machined up, now just ready for jointing. Sadly, maple isn't the easiest of timbers to work. It's very, very hard and the grain can sometimes be quite interlocked. So it will tear unless you use very, very sharp tools. Also, you often get bark inclusions like this and also mineral staining. So you're gonna have to work around these little defects, put them at the back somewhere where they're not gonna show. These are the boards for the center uprights. You can just juggle them around to get the best grain match. And rather than glue up each side individually, what I tend to do is glue up one big sheet and then cut out what I need from that. You can see the joints off the machine plane are actually quite good. Look how well that goes together. There's absolutely no gap at all. However, you may find some of them need fine tuning a bit. This one here is not absolutely perfect. So I'm just going to use a hand plane and the longer the sole on the plane the better just to fine tune that so there's no gap before we try and joint it up. Modern glues are so strong these days, you could actually just butt joint these together. However, if you use dowels or biscuits, it does hold all the pieces level when you tighten up the clamps. So I'm going to use my biscuit jointer. We should only need a couple of biscuits in each. So just line up all the ends and then just make a mark across each piece where you want the biscuit to be. Doesn't matter exactly where this is. Keep them roughly in line. Okay, and now we could cut each slot. So now just line up the mark on the biscuit jointer with the mark we made on the timber and cut the slot. Keep it firmly pressed down on the surface. Push it in gently. And then cut the second one. I set this for number 10 size biscuit, which is the middle size. There you are, you can see the two slots cut. You'll notice they're not dead in the middle. That doesn't matter, I just set it by eye. As long as you always work from the face side on each piece, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. 
So now it's just a question of working through each piece in exactly the same way. Remember, the two outer pieces only need biscuits in one edge. And now I think we're ready to glue that lot up. These are the biscuits I'm going to use. These are size 10, as I say. One thing you will notice with maple in particular is it often leaves shavings in the slot. So just clean these out with a brad awl or a fine screwdriver. Because you want that biscuit to seat in properly. Otherwise the joint won't pull up tight. It's much easier to cramp up if you get the boards up off the bench surface, as you'll see in a minute. So just put a couple of bearers down and lay them out on this. Now with any glue up job, it's essential that you get everything ready before you start. It's quite often you haven't got a lot of time before the glue starts going off. So get your clamps or cramps, perhaps as they should be properly called, all set out to the right length. I've got my glue, I'm using PVA glue here. I've got a little brush for getting in the biscuit slots and now I think I'm ready to go. So get these out of the way and then just run a thin bead of glue down the edge, get some in the slot, some in that slot. Don't overdo it, there's enough on there and then a little bit in the matching slot. You needn't do the whole edge on the opposing piece. There's enough glue on the first one. Just a little bit in there and then drop your biscuit in. Same for the other slot. And then these two should just slot together. Make sure they're lined up properly. The two pencil lines. And now just carry on all the way down the full width. There we go. And now you can put the cramps on. You can see how much easier it is with the pieces raised up off the bench. I don't worry on Julie about putting cramping blocks to protect the edge of the timber. For a start the joints are pretty good and I'm not going to have to use tremendous pressure to pull the joints up tight. And secondly I'm going to plane this edge when I'm finished anyway so I'm not bothered about any slight marking. But there is another very important point. When I tighten up the cramp, glue is going to squeeze out of all these joints. And if this glue comes into contact with the metal of the cramp bar, it's going to leave a dark stain. Just in a few hours it will stain the wood to quite a considerable depth. So it is really important that you get this cramp out of contact with the timber. So I just use a couple of offcuts of MDF just to jack it up a fraction. And now you can squeeze up nice and tight. Same again. The other one. A block under each bar. Make sure they're away from the glue so they're not going to stick. As that one is. Make sure they're not going to stick to the surface. Gentle pressure just to hold it all together. You shouldn't have to be winding on tremendous pressure if the joints have been machined properly in the first place. That's the first one done. Now just repeat the whole procedure for the other sections. Right, there we go. That's the last one done. This is the one for the shelves. I'm lucky I've got some really long clamps or cramps so I can do it as one piece. If you haven't got cramps as long as this, just do it in several sections. It's always, I find, much less wasteful to do it in one long piece if you can and then chop out what you want. You also need to decide what you're going to do about the glue squeeze out. You can see it here, no matter how careful you are, there's always a certain amount of glue that comes up from the joints on both sides. There are various opinions as to how best to deal with this. Some people say you should wipe it off with a damp cloth. Personally, I prefer to leave it as it is, let it dry and then just chisel it off. If you do try getting it off with a wet cloth, you find you rub glue into the surrounding timber and then that can become very patchy if you want to stain or polish it. So I leave it alone, chisel it off when it's dry. Okay, so here we are now, some 24 hours later. Everything's glued up. We've got the sides, the shelf, the base. This is the top. I think you can see now what I meant about the glue squeeze out. It's much easier to let it dry like this and then you can see it just chisels 
off much cleaner than trying to get it off with a wet cloth. It needn't be too fussy at this stage. I'm going to give it all a really good sanding later on, do that in the later stages of the construction. All I want to do now is just get the lumps and bumps off so that it will sit down flat on the saw table when we machine out the sizes. So just work all over each piece. It takes a little while, but I can assure you it is quicker than trying to sand out glue that's got impregnated into the grain. So the next stage is to cut out all the pieces we want from the boards we've made up. And for this I'm going to use the GTS 10XE table saw. And you can see I've fitted a coarse rip blade. These are all going to be rip cuts at this stage, so a coarser blade will actually give you a much better finish. It's not going to burn like a really fine blade will. I need a couple of 70mm pieces to start with and then a couple at 165mm. So let's get started with that. Don't forget your safety glasses. And away we go. So there we are, 24 hours, gluing it all together, 5 minutes, cutting it all up again. But at least now, hopefully, it should all be the right size and things start to get a bit more interesting. Start by just skimming up all the cut edges, just take any saw marks away, get them nice and straight, nice and smooth, and then make up the outer sides by biscuit jointing the two pieces together. Just hold the two pieces, the narrow pieces together for extra support while you're working on the edge. These should then just fit together. There's the leg, and now you can put the shape on the bottom end. So that's the first one cut out. Don't forget, you've got to make one left hand and one right hand. They need to be handed. Now you can cut the base panel to size and shape. I've swapped the blade in the table saw for a much finer one. In fact, this is a triple chip one for laminate, but you can see it leaves a super fine finish on solid timber. An alternative way to get the necessary long straight cuts, particularly when you're dealing with bigger pieces, is to use the circular saw on a guide track. And again, you can see with a fine tooth TCT blade, you get a really good finish straight off the saw. All right, so that's the base cut out to shape. The next step is to cut the internal dividers. A really good tip here, if your saw has a capacity, is to square up one end of each side and clamp the two together and make the second cut through them both. That way they're bound to end up exactly the same length. It's far more precise than trying to cut each one individually. So there are the three shelves cut to size. The next job is to join these into the uprights. I think the biscuit jointer is again going to be the easiest and quickest way to do that. The biscuit slots in the end of the shelves are easy. Just use the fence on the biscuit jointer itself. For the slots in the uprights, I use a straight edge clamped across the board and run the biscuit joint up against that. And if you clamp the two uprights together, making sure the ends are lined up properly, and the one straight edge across the two, the slots are bound to line up and the shelves are then going to line up across the width of the unit.
Then put in a single biscuit on the other side of the upright to take the DVD and CD shelves. Then just clamp the inner and outer sides together and transfer the line across the biscuit on the outer side. You'll also need to put a biscuit into the end of the base to locate in the outer side. The side in place you can then mark out for the notch where the front leg is going to be set back into the front. So just mark that and then I can cut it out with a jigsaw. Now you can do a trial assembly, make sure everything does actually fit together and then work out where the biscuit slots are going to go for the main uprights into the base. And then cut these slots in the same way as all the others. So it's all coming together, it doesn't look too bad. All needs squaring up yet though as you can see. A couple of things to notice, the first one is I've cut this shelf back 15 millimeters to give the glass clearance to shut and also all the shelves are set back from the uprights by about the same amount to allow me to slot in the plywood back. So now I've just cut these little shelves, fitted those on their biscuits, notched them out to take the front facing to the leg. Now the next job is to put all the grooves in the back of this section and the back of the main section to take the plywood back. So first off is a groove down the outer side using 4mm ply and I'm cutting a 4.5mm groove. Then the matching one down the outside of the inner side. You'll need to do the same on the inner side and then again on the base. I'm now just going to put it all together again for the final sort of trial assembly so I can cut the backs to the right size and then we can start thinking about the actual final assembly. The back should then just slide in. It also squares everything up as well. There it goes. Slight bow in the ply, but that'll soon sort out. We'll tap. There's the back, nicely in place. And then the same again for the two side panels. Fits nicely into the groove. Okay, you can see again I've dismantled it all. Because I want to get it polished at this stage, when it's all assembled it's going to be very difficult to get in all the nooks and crannies. I want to polish all the individual pieces. Before I can do that I've got to clean them up and for that I've used a random orbit sander with a 140 grit abrasive on it. It gives me a lovely smooth clean finish. So I'm sanding all the individual pieces and then I'm going to run a tiny radius down all the exposed edges. It just makes it that little bit softer. It looks really professional I think rather than just leaving really sharp edges. Maybe it's just a matter of taste. So sand it, get it nice and clean, run a radius down the edges, and then I can apply my polish. I'm using a Cellos brushing lacquer, just to give me a nice seal, putting it on with a soft brush. Big advantage of Cellos is it dries very, very quickly, virtually instantly. The disadvantage is the fumes, so make sure you work in an area where there's plenty of ventilation, keep the doors and the windows open. And once this is dry, I can denib it and then apply the wax polish which I want as the final finish. Then once this is all dry I can get on making the top and also the drawer. The first coat dries in seconds but it does leave the surface feeling quite rough. So if you then just denib it with some very fine paper, this is 360 grit, wet or dry, just run all over that with the paper, it leaves a silky smooth finish. Go over that with a tack cloth to get rid of the dust. Put on another coat of the lacquer, let that dry, denim it again and then apply a wax polish. You get a super smooth satin look to it that's really durable but looks really really good. For the drawer I'm going to use 
this maple faced chipboard is going to be a lot more stable than trying to use solid timber. Solid timber always tends to move a little bit with change in humidity and temperature and then the drawer tends to stick. This will be much more stable. I've cut them all to size. What I need to do now is just run a groove all the way around to take the plywood bottom. I'm going to dowel it together using a standard doweling jig, 8mm dowels. Then I need to run a groove in the two sides to take the actual drawer runner. This just recesses into the side. And then I'm going to stick a solid maple drawer front on so it'll all match in and look as if it is actually all made from solid timber. That's the doweling done, now the groove for the drawer bottom. Then finally the groove for the drawer runner. Make sure the dowels seat right home, they're deep enough in, don't stop the joint going together. Then the last side goes on. Use a couple of clamps just to pull it all up tight and then just check it for squareness. If it is slightly out of square you can always adjust the squareness by putting a clamp on a very slight angle it just puts a slight skew on the way it pulls it up and it takes out any out of squareness that looks better. You can see I've started to assemble it all now finally. This has been in the clamps for three or four hours so the glue should have gone off enough to take them off and start uh, adding a bit more. The secret with any big job like this when there's lots and lots of different pieces is to do it in sections. Don't try and glue it all up in one go, do it in sections. So I've done the middle part first, the back is still actually loose but I'll fix that later. I'm now going to add the side wings and the base. So here we are with the left hand side now glued up. Just wait for a few hours for that to dry. And there's the right hand side being glued up. It seems to take a lot longer doing it this way, but it is much, much easier to do it in stages. Just wait for the glue to go off before you move on to the next one. With the main carcass assembled, I've now fitted the drawer on the runners. And I'm now screwing the front onto the drawer box. The advantage of doing a separate drawer front on the drawer box, you can just tweak the alignment to get a nice even gap all the way around. All that's left to do now is to cut the top to the correct size. You can see I've put a much bigger radius on the top of the edge compared to the underside and now I just need to blend this all in with a sander. The top obviously is finishing in exactly the same way as the rest of the unit. But there's a really important tip here, particularly when you're working with solid timber like this. Always put the same number of coats on the underside as you do on the top, and that way it will stay stable. If you just coat the top, which is a bit that shows, and leave the underside unfinished, it'll always tend to cup. Right, there are a couple more jobs to do before we finally get to fit the top. I've put a stabilising foot on the back. This is just glued in place. This will just stop the unit tipping over backwards. We also need to cut some access holes in the back to put all the plugs through. I found the easiest way to do this is to use a template and the router with a bearing guided cutter. I just run round the template. The template's held in place with some double sided tape. I want one in each section and we can feed the plugs through and connect everything up. To fix the top, I'm going to use these little blocks I've made. And the secret of these is to make all the screw holes oversized so the top has room to move. If you fix it down tight, these solid tops will crack with changing temperature or humidity conditions. These difficult to access areas, you cannot beat the little GSR driver. I 
that's nicely fixed but still got plenty of room for movement side to side. For the final polish just go over all the surfaces with your wax polish and I apply this with a pad of very fine steel wool this is four noughts steel wool make sure it's all covered and then just buff it to a lovely sheen with a soft cloth you can see how silky silky smooth that is a really really nice finish that looks really natural as well so there we are our finished build it with Bosch TV stand I've just fitted these little glass doors you should be able to get your local glass merchant to cut these to size for you and then polish the edges if you want to fit them that is you'll have seen how simple the construction was I've mostly used a biscuit jointer the router and then some fine finishing work from the sander it should be within the capabilities of anyone with a few basic DIY skills but the end result is a fine looking piece of contemporary furniture in solid timber I do hope you've enjoyed the build I'm Alan Holtham till next time Bye-bye for now.